the trimming video trimming video for pottery 2 right so first uh, you know the project right now is bowls but the biggest thing on the bowl assignment is trimming and it doesn't matter what we're trimming it's essentially the same okay right when we're trimming a pot we're gonna take some clay away from the bottom right by removing it with a tool on the wheel okay uh, we all know at this point we should know anyways that we're not finished with anything that we made on the wheel until it's trimmed. In fact, if you put something into the kiln or the finished projects area that has not been trimmed, I just put it in the reclaim because I'm not firing projects that are not finished, right? So before I even start trimming, I'm just gonna kind of feel, see where it gets thicker. My pot gets thicker about right here, so I'm gonna start trimming this way. I'm gonna feel how thick it is on the bottom so I can get a good sense of where I'm gonna be trimming, okay? What I'm going to add to this video is two different ways to stick the clay down. That you, so this is, this, that part is new uh, that you didn't get that information when in Pottery 1, right? So same thing, I'm going to feel this really quickly, this mug, feel how thick it is, right? I'm going to put it on the wheel. So this is, this is what I'm going to change. When we put things on the wheel, now that you guys are probably a little more comfortable with centering your pots on the wheel, or you should be, hopefully, going to help you guys stick it down to the wheel head better. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this damp. I'm going to get the pot damp. right? Especially with a mug. I know we're doing bowls right now, but especially with a mug, we want to trim these kind of wet. So right, I can still move this just a little bit. That way when I put a handle on it, it won't be too, too dry for the handle. Okay? But in general, you know, you want leather hard when we're trimming. Okay? Leather hard. If you're not sure, go ahead and come and ask me or somebody else uh, if it's good enough to trim. Okay, you don't want to trim it too wet. Obviously, you don't want it to trim it too dry. If you're trimming it too dry, I'm going to stop you and tell you that you're not supposed to do that, uh, just because it puts a lot of dust in the air. All right. So I got this wet. It's just damp, right? The lip is just a little damp as well. I'm going to secure this on. I'm going to center it. Right, a little refresher on centering. Uh, if you can't get it centered, go ahead and use, you can use your needle tool. I get this centered. All right, push it into center. Or I do a tap centering technique where I just kind of have my hand over here and I just tap this in. Okay. But here's the important part. Since we got the wheel wet, since we got the lip wet, what we can do is just kind of secure this down. Right, and I just like to kind of wiggle it and I'm pressing down. If we do this properly, this thing's going to be stuck really well. It's going to work even better with your bowls because they'll have a wider base they'll be shorter. But if I do this properly, this thing is stuck pretty dang good. And I actually don't even need, if I did it properly, chucks of clay on the bottom. Right? So hopefully that's the case with this one and I'll start trimming it and hopefully it won't come off the wheel. But since I got the wheel wet, since I got the lip wet, not really wet but just damp, it's going to stick there quite well. So the secret, in other words, to getting your pots to stick to the wheel is really just getting the, the moisture right on the pot and on the wheel. All right, also, uh, you know, I'm not pressing really hard like this, you know, every time I press I'm still doing this, right? The reason I didn't give you this information beforehand um, for this demo is because in Pottery 1 you're really just trying to get the thing centered, so a lot more to worry, to worry about, right? So trying to simplify it for Pottery 1. And Pottery 2, give you a little bit more information. And really, I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of making lots of things and getting comfortable with trimming and figuring out how it works. Just like uh, when you're making pots on the wheel, right? The more you make, the better you're gonna get trimming the same thing so don't shy away from trimming and I want you to be trimming everything you make a lot of times my students aren't as good at trimming simply because they haven't practiced as much and then they get to where they actually feel like they can save a nice pot and then they ruin it trimming because they haven't been practicing trimming as much all right so I get the profile here right now my foot goes to about right here 
So I'm going to trim the inside so it matches that, right? So the depth of the inside is really dictated by the foot that I put on the outside, okay? Remember the goal with trimming, one, aesthetically, we want our trimmed pot to look better, right? To look finished. We get rid of all the sharp edges, right? But also, if we trim correctly, right, technically, the sharp edges are not good. They're gonna chip, right? So we're eliminating some problems. We're also getting at the same evenness. That's probably the biggest goal, you know, as far as the technical side of, <clears throat> trimming the biggest goal is simply to get the same evenness throughout that's the goal with every pot we make is to make the wall thickness even throughout and so now I've got the depth like I said to about here so that matches up now I'm going to round this out And lastly, kind of my signature that I like to put on here. I just like to put this little line. It's a good place for the glaze to stop. Obviously that's not a requirement, but that's, that's what I like to put on all my pots right there. And I also like to smooth everything out. So I like to, at the end, I just like to get a little wet. Take my rib and smooth all these lines out. Once again, not a requirement by any means. That's just what I like to do. All right, so that's stuck quite well. Sometimes it sticks so well that it's actually a little difficult to get off. All right, that one's not too bad. All right, and then you just really want to get in the habit of smoothing out your lips on here. Anytime I get things off the wheel when I'm done trimming, I'll just give it a little smooth, smoothing with that. Now would be the time to straighten some things out as well. So there you go. That's a trimmed cup. It's going to be a mug. I'm going to put a handle on that guy. All right. I said I was going to show you another way as well. So I'm going to trim one more pot and I'm going to show you a way to stick your pots to the wheel head. All right. It's different. So you can still use the chucks of clay, I recommend that you do, uh, but I would really work on getting that moisture correct on the wheel and the pot so that it sticks correctly. Right, this way that I'm gonna show you is great for lots of different things. If I was gonna do uh, trim a bottle, I would do it this way. Uh, if I was gonna trim more than four things, if I made four pots, or I'd maybe even more than three, I would do this way because it's a lot faster if you have many pots. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to center a piece of clay on here, but I'm going to center it a little bit differently. And uh, let me be clear, you're not required to trim this way. This is just, you'll probably run into a time where this is going to work well for you. Okay. In fact, with bowls, you're going to have to use quite a bit more clay because it's going to need to come out as wide as the lip is on your pot. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, but maybe not even trim this way with bowls. The first way I showed you is better. But at some point, you're going to want to trim. You're going to want to trim like this. Okay? So what I've done is I've centered this clay, but it's a cone instead of the shape that I want you to do when you're actually making a pot, right? Then I'm going to take my card. I scrape off any extra slip that's on there, right? Get all the slip off. And this is how I trim when I trim, you know, I just made 20 of these. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trim all of these using this method, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this on here. I'm gonna use my left hand, kind of center this. I'm gonna tap it down. So this is a really quick way to center your projects and trim. But obviously it takes time to get your cone on the bottom, so. But your pot can stick quite well this way as well, so. It really fastens down the clay on the bottom. Holds it there. 
All right, one thing you definitely want to make sure of when you're trimming this way, you get all that slip off because otherwise your pot's gonna stick to this cone so well that uh, you're gonna have a huge amount of clay to clean up off the lip here. All right, I'll show you what I mean when I'm done here. Notice how when I'm trimming, I'm really using the edges to take out a lot of here or here to take out a bunch of clay. And then when I smooth out the transitions, I'm using the straight edge here. This is kind of a review from the demo pottery one. I'm gonna use the edge here. Maybe not lastly, but maybe that. Put my little signature line on here. If you trim correctly, it's a really great way to get glaze lines nice and perfect on your pots. Think about that, right? This line on the inside here, that line is a great place to stop, right? Also, want to make sure that the depth in the middle is going to be enough that I can glaze the inside here. If you didn't make your bottom thick enough, then you're not going to be able to glaze the inside. That's a really nice uh, addition to your pot when you can glaze the inside of your foot. In fact, after look at that, I'm going to take off just a little more glaze so I can ensure that it doesn't stick on the bottom. Okay, so I'm off. Let's be careful taking this off. And if I did this correctly, in other words, if I didn't have a bunch of wet clay on here and I carded this off well, then this is going to be, it's going to require a little bit of cleaning here, but not a ton. Okay, I'm just going to take my sponge. I've seen many students do this and then they have to scrape off with their card a whole bunch of clay off here because they didn't get this part correct, right? I do want you to try this maybe when we do mugs or some other project. Lastly, on this video, I'll show you what to do if maybe you have a bottle that you're trimming in this method, okay? So, we're gonna do bottles later, but if you do, if you make, you can kind of design this lump of clay to do whatever you want as far as trimming goes. So if I have a bottle, I make this, and I can flip the bottle upside down inside here and trim it. Okay. So here we have something that's a little bit different trimming. Some of you guys may elect to make bowls that you just want a flat bottom, opposed to a raised foot, right? Raised foot, flat bottom. So I'm going to leave the bottom here flat. This utilizes my hump mold here, my chunk of clay. Call that a hump mold, uh, and it's going to teach you how to trim a flat bottom. It's a little more difficult to center these this way, but still do it. And so if I'm gonna trim a flat bottom, do that. The most important thing, if you're gonna, if you want to do a flat bottom pot, is that it's still uh, shallower or deeper here than it is on the edge, right? Because when we when we're finished with our pot, we want it to sit here. We don't want it to wobble by sitting in the middle. But my biggest concern with these flat bottom pots is just really smoothing out the bottom, right? We still want to trim it so that we can smooth it out. I also, when I made this pot, I made the bottom thinner, so there's not as much clay here as there was on our previous mugs. And then lastly, I'm just going to smooth this guy out. Just to illustrate that you want that bottom just a little bit shallower, I'll put this here so you can see that there's about an eighth of an inch difference here. It's resting on the sides here, not in the middle. 
Sometimes you can even just give a little tap here in the middle to help that out. All right, that concludes the video.